Okay, so I'm going to record this a little as well. I, I think we've talked about it, but it's always good to remind you. So this is actually the example I do in the video tutorial. Uh, if you get to the last, I think, video, this is pretty much where I end up. Um, I do a make to the of, uh, of my project using the clipping plane. And here I do a make to the of the same, but the clipping plane is in a different position. Uh, these are all of the layers that come from Rhino directly, which is in appearance, sorry, uh, in appearance is actually quite daunting. Like what, what the hell am I going to do with all of this stuff? But let's actually understand what the layers are for. Okay. So if you read a little bit, it says make to the, so they come from a make to the, they're actually, some of them are visible and other ones are hidden. There are only two types, visible and hidden you know that all of the hidden lines, they tend to be in your project represented as a dash line or light gray or almost like something that is there, but you don't, wanna, you don't want to show them very prominently. You know? So I bring all of the hidden lines to the bottom, these three, and all of the visible ones to the top, okay? That's one first step I normally do. Number two, how do I actually change the hidden lines to this type of line all at the same time? Well, you go one by one, you click on the circle to the right of the layer of the hidden one. Click. And if you have this little box to the right of the circle, that means that you have selected the entire layer, which means all of the objects within that layer, which are all of this. Not many in this case, but they are. And then while selected, you can change the line thickness, the dashed line, and the color. Okay, so if I go to layers and I go to the next hidden one, I select the circle, the stroke, I can make them very thick, for example, or very thin. I can change the line color to all of them at the same time, and I can change this, the size of the dash five and two, for example, okay. Okay, what's the top, um, you know where it says on the top, no selection to the right, is that also a way for you to change the color? Uh, sorry, panel, where? On the panel on the top, where, uh, like underneath file, to the right of no selection, like are those ways to you change the colors yeah. too? Uh, this is exactly the same, they're like uh, shortcuts okay. to this, so you can use them. This is a shortcut to that, and okay. this, this is a shortcut to this. Okay, these are shortcuts to that. So it's, a, it's pretty much a shortcut. It's the same thing is repeated here and there a couple of times, so you can use them as well. Yeah, you're welcome to use those. Now, when I did the make to the after, you know, in Rhino using the clipping plane, I also brought a new layer, which is called the make to the clipping plane visible. Okay, so this is a series of layers that uh, have the, let's call it the surname, clipping plane intersections. If I turn everything off except those, these are the lines of the clipping plane. The ones that again are visible and clipping plane intersections. They're exactly the meeting point of the clipping plane and the object. This is incredibly useful because you can do with it a lot of things like I did in the video tutorial is for example here I made that intersection a little bit thicker in black and then here I use the the live paint bucket to paint inside only the clipping plane lines to create this thickening section. No? That allowed me to have a filling or a better understanding of what is being sectioned here and here. Of course, now the red lines are a little bit too strong, but they were gray before. We would have understand, would have understood very clearly that this is actually the section because I made the clipping plane layer thicker, okay? So even though it seems like there's a lot of layers, they're actually quite straightforward. There's a, a group of layers that are visible and there are a group of layers that are hidden. And then only if you use the clipping plane, you're gonna have 
another group of layers that are clipping plane intersections that you can use to make a thicker line or to draw on top of it, like the video, the last video talks about. Okay. Okay. So you might want to try those, in, especially in yeah. your section, and see how that works. Yeah, uh, I can definitely look at that again. Thank you. Let me stop that video. When I was 